All right, so this was the first one I gave you yesterday as far as what it asked you to do. It said, describe the pattern, write the next term, and write the rule for the nth term of the sequence. So, first and foremost, what's happening? Okay, we're multiplying it by, if we multiply it by negative 5, not quite, but you're on, you're on to something. Okay, it's not multiplying by negative 5, because Kylie, if I were to take negative 5 times negative 5, I'd have 25 for the next one. So, but you're on the right track. It's something with fives. It's just not multiplying by five. It's going up by five. It's going up by five. All of those numbers, now, the way I look at this a lot of times is forget that the negative sign even exists. Five, 10, 15, 20. They're multiples of five, right? Okay. So then the other thing that you noticed is that the signs alternate. Okay, that's kind of describing the pattern. Then as far as writing the next term, what number would come next? Negative 25, good. And then as far as the rule goes, and this is where some of you struggled with this, and that's okay, that's part of it, but what you got to do is, as you guys were saying, it goes up by 5. Here's kind of the way that you look at this. This is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, this is the fourth term. So when you're looking at that, I've got to put in the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 to get those numbers out. How do I do that? Well, 1 plus 4 makes 5, but 2 plus 4 does not make 10. So therefore, that's out the window. So what's another way I can make a 1 into a 5? Multiply it by 5. Does 2 times 5, 10? 3 times 5, 15? So it is timesing it by 5. In a sense, where there are multiples of 5, so we're going to say 5n for that part. Now, as far as how you alternate signs, the unwritten rule for alternating signs is you take negative 1 and raise it to whatever the nth power is. Now, the reason why you do that is because if I take negative 1 to the first, I get negative. Negative 1 squared, I get positive. Negative 1 to the third, negative. Fourth, positive. It alternates. Okay, so anytime you have alternating signs, that's kind of the unwritten rule is that's how you're going to get the signs to alternate is having that negative 1 to the nth power in front of it. Make sure, make sure, make sure that the negative 1 is in parentheses also. If you don't, it's going to be wrong. But that's number 2. Number 3. 1 over 20, 2 over 30, 3 over 40. 4 over 50, bop, bop, bop. And when you have fractions, it's important that you look at them individually as top versus bottom. So just looking at the tops, what's happening? Up by 1. What about the bottoms? Up by 10. That's you describing the pattern. So what's the next number? 5 over 60. Good. You got that part done. Now, as far as the rule goes, and again, this is the part that always seems to be the most troublesome. Remember, this is the first term, second term, third term, and fourth term. So what would I have to multiply 1 by to get 1? Or 2 by to get 1, or 2? Or 3 by to get 3? 1, right? So anytime that that's like that, that doesn't need anything other than n. Because when I insert numbers in for n, it just increases automatically by 1 every time. Now, the tricky part comes with finding the bottom. You said they're going up by 10s, but if I put 1 plus 10, that's not 20. So if I'm putting 1 in there, how do I get 20 out? I can multiply it by 20. But if I do that, the next number, 2 times 20, is not 30. So that doesn't work. I could add 19. 1 plus 19 is 20. Yeah, but 2 plus 19 is not 30. So what I did when I looked at this problem is I saw that they were all multiples of 10, and you were on to something with the going up by 10s. So if I divided every one of the bottoms by 10 or took a 10 out, I had 2, 10 times 3, 10 times 4, 10 times 5. So now how am I getting, if I look at this now instead, now how do I make a 1 into a 2? 
add one. How do I make a two into a three? Add one. So what I'm doing is on the bottom is I'm taking 10 times n plus one. And that's my rule. Okay. So as far as what's going to happen for that one, it first said describe it, which you guys told me out loud. I didn't write it down, but you guys told me out loud what was going on. Then you told me the next number for each of them, and then you told me the rule. Okay? Those are going to be the most tricky ones for you because of the fact that you have a lot of, you know, the patterns could be different for some of you. You could have different answers there, and you could still have the same thing, as long as it works. Okay? But that was two and three. Was the next one number four? One plus two plus three plus bop, 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 plus 15. And it says, write the series using summation notation. What's summation notation? The E thing, right, sigma. Okay. What letter would you like to use? Uh, I. I, okay. Uh, what number do you start at? One. One. What number are you going to go to? And what's your pattern? You're just adding one. So if you're doing that, you don't say n plus one. Because remember, this is the first term, second term, third term. So what would I multiply by one by to get one? One. So that's like saying one n. Now, do you need the one in front of it? No, you don't. Now, from here, the reason why we stopped at 15 was because when I put this in here, what number it gives me 15 at the end? Some of you guys, when we were doing problems like that before, do you remember the one where we had 25n and the last number was 250? Some of you guys were putting 250 for the stopping point. 250 times 25 is not 250. Okay, so that's where you've got to figure out what, your, what number you're going to stop at. Then from there, it says find the sum. So what you had to do from this is then add all the digits from 1 to 15 together. 1 plus 2 plus 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, if you want to do it that way. Okay, what do you get? 120. Oh, shoot. Hold on. I almost forgot. You didn't use N, you used I. So I better put it as an I rather than an N. Sorry. What was the next one we gave you? Was it in 6? Okay. 9, 16, 25, yeah, bap, bap, 100. Okay. One other quick question that I haven't asked yet. Is this a finite or infinite series? Finite. Why? It has it in the middle, not at the end. It ends, right? The last number is 100. So when I'm looking at this pattern, again, we're trying to write it in this type of formation. If I look at that, that's adding 7 and that's adding 9. Well, it's not arithmetic. So then if I took 16 divided by 9, is 25 divided by 16 the same number? Uh, no. It is not geometric. But there is a definite pattern to it. What would the next number be, by the way? <clears throat> 36. And the next number after that? 49. Okay. What's happening? What numbers are 9, 16, 25? They're the squares. Here's another way to look at that. The difference between here is 7, the difference between there is 9, the difference between that is 2, right? The difference between this and this would be 11, but the difference between there is also 2. The difference between the next one, 49 to 36, is 13, but the difference between 11 and 13 is 2. See how that pattern starts establishing there? Second level like that usually means squared. Okay? Now... 
If you say that the numbers are squared, what letter do you want to use? N? What number do you start with? Three. Three. You're starting at three, not at one. What number do you end with? Ten. And that's the part where some of you guys were messing up on that because you were saying it was to 100. You were saying 100 squared is 100. That's not true. Okay? Now, as far as adding them goes, 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36 plus 49, 64, 81, 100. What do you get? Okay, that's number six. Uh, what was the next one, seven? Yeah. Seven's got one of those graphing looking things. One and then it's point two five. Two and then it's point five. Three and then it's point seven five. Four and then it's one. Five and then it's one point two five. Now I didn't write them in the graph type format. I made them more like looking like a chart type format. Is that any different though? No. No. So now what I need you to understand is the one, two, three, four, and five, the x coordinates of the graph are nothing more than first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. The outputs or the y coordinates are my actual sequence. So how are they going up or down or multiplied or whatever? They're going up by a quarter. So we're adding 0.5 or 0.25, right? Okay, so that means as soon as you say adding by the same number every time, we are an arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequence is a sub n, a1 plus n minus 1 times the d. So, what's A1? 0. 0.25. 0. Plus N minus 1 times what's the D? 0. 0.25. And that's number 7. Okay. Now, if you'd like to, you could distribute that out. You could distribute that into both of those, and that would be acceptable also. And that would be 0.25n. Bless you. What was the next one I gave you? Eight? Okay. Eight's got one is at 0.5. Two is at one. Three is at two. Four is at four. And 5 is at 8. So again, for me personally, I don't like looking at it in the graph. I like looking at it more of a chart. Again, the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are just telling you term 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The 1 through 5 on the top is really just telling you the number of terms. Now, the next part. How does it go from here to here? We can add, hold on, we're going to add 0.5, but does that do the same thing from here to here? No. So we're not adding. So then if we look at the other route, we take the second one divided by the first one. 1 divided by 0.5, which you guys told me was 2. Okay? Now let's just see if it works for another random set. What's the fifth one divided by the fourth one? 2. Hey, it's got a pattern there. That's a ratio, right? So then when it's like that, A1 times R N minus 1. What's in your A1? 0. 0.5, good. And what's the R? 2. Done. Okay? That's number 8. Another way to kind of look at it, too, 
is arithmetic sequences, if you're looking at the actual grid or the graph of them, arithmetic sequences should look like a straight line. They should be linear. Whereas a geometric one could look like a couple different options. Geometric could look like, remember those exponential curves? From a long time ago? Do you remember the ones that go like this? That's one route that it could look like. Another one could look like something like this where it goes do, 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 kind of all the way down or it looks like it would make a V if you connect all the dots. That's another route that it could look like if it's geometric. Okay? All right, what was the next one I gave you? 10? 13, 6, 1, 8. Pop, pop, pop. Okay, so the question is, is this arithmetic, geometric, or neither? I don't care about the rest of it. That's the first thing you need to answer. Why is this arithmetic? We're subtracting 7 every time. So that's part of your answer. When I ask you which one it is, it's arithmetic, you said. Some of you guys just put big capital A for arithmetic. That's just fine. Okay? As long as you label it somehow. Now, the next part says, write the rule for the nth term. So if you know it's arithmetic, what's A1? 13 plus 1. And minus 1 times, what's your D? Good. Then it goes on to also say find a sub 9. What does that mean when it says find a sub 9? Put 9 in front and see what you get. 13 plus 9 minus 1 times negative 7. What's 9 minus 1? What's 8 times negative 7? Bless you. 13 minus 56? Negative 43. Good. Can you handle that? Sure. 11 is the next one, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. OK. <coughs> Where it gives you 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth, bop, bop, bop. Arithmetic, geometric, or neither? Okay, if it's arithmetic, what am I adding? Uh, one plus a half is one and a half. But if I do that, remember, you've got to get common denominators in order to do that, Tamara. So it's not arithmetic. Because I'm not adding, like in order to get one half to one third, I would have to subtract, first of all. Because 0.5 is bigger than that. So I'd have to get common denominators for the whole thing. <coughs> okay? Common denominator between 2 and 3 is 6. So this would be 3 6. This would be 2 6. So if I took 2 6 minus 3 6, I get negative 1 6. Is 1 third. Or is 1 fourth minus 1 third the same as minus 1 6? But these are fractions. These are fractions. For arithmetic. No, not necessarily. It's because the fact that if you said arithmetic, it needs to be added or subtracted by the same number every time. It has to be added or subtracted by the same number every time. So therefore, when you add or subtract, you have to have for fractions, you have to have a common denominator. They weren't arithmetic, were they? They were just sequences. So is this one arithmetic? No, this one's uh, neither. Then as far as finding the rule, now 
Tamara was on to something. She did say it does go up by one, on the, but just on the bottom. And that's the case where this wouldn't necessarily be arithmetic because you're not adding or subtracting the same number every time. But you are adding one to the bottom. So as far as my rule for that goes, I would have 1 over n plus 1. Do you know why I put n plus 1? Do I start with 1 on the first one? Do I start with 1 on the first one for the, no, the first bottom, sorry. No, what's the first bottom? 2. So in order to make a 1 into a 2, you can either multiply it by 2 or add 1. 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. That's not arithmetic, that's just a sequence. Okay? Huh? Neither. And then as far as finding the nth or the ninth term, what's 9 plus 1? Number 12. Arithmetic, geometric, or none of the above? Why is this geometric? What are we doing? Multiplying it by negative 3. Good. So a sub n equals, what's the first term? 1. Negative 3 was the ratio you told me, n minus 1. Nice job. Now as far as the 10th, the ninth term, what? As far as finding the ninth term, negative 3, 9 minus 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. Negative 3 to the eighth power, first of all, should be positive. And 3 times 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 3. How much? 6,561. Did we do 13? Yeah, it's 10 Okay. Number 13, one term of an arithmetic sequence is a sub 12 equals 19. The common difference is d equals 7. Write the rule for the nth term. Now, it told you it was arithmetic, yeah? Arithmetic means you're using this format. Let's plug in what we know. What's the D? Do you know what A1 is? No. But you do know that when you put in 12, you got out 19, which means the 12 goes in for N, and the 19 goes in for A sub N. So what do we need to find? A1. What's 12 minus 1? What's 11 times 7? Now what? Subtract 77 to both sides. What's 19 minus 77? So as far as the rule goes, a sub n equals negative 58 for the a1 plus n minus 1 times the d, which was 7. Then from there, it also said graph the first six terms. So if I, have the, if I know the first one's negative 58, okay, one of the things that you can do when you look at that, since you know it's arithmetic, negative 58 plus 7 is what? Plus 7. Plus 7? Plus 7? So there's my first six terms, yeah? Okay, so in order to do that, now as far as graphing goes, you make the graph based on this. These are nothing more than ordered pairs. 
1 and 58, 2 and 50, negative 51, 3 and negative 48, or 44. When you do that, you know, make sure you make an X over here and a Y here like so, just like you would for a normal graphing. But then put the thing down here at negative 58. Put it down here at negative 51. You don't necessarily have to go from 0 all the way up there, because that would be a big waste of overkill. Okay? And then you go over 1. Go down to negative 58, make a dot. Go over 2, go down to 51, make a dot. What should happen with an arithmetic one? What should it look like? Straight line. Okay. So as far as graphing it goes, that's how it works or looks like when you graph them. Okay. Number 14. Two terms of a geo. Our a sub 6 equals negative 50, and a sub 9 equals negative 6 to 250. Write the rule for the nth term. Now, we did this two different times, one of them for arithmetic, one of them for geometric. Arithmetic, you could use elimination. Geometric, you had to use substitution. This is geometric, so we got to use substitution. So in order to do that, first of all, we got out negative 50, we don't know A1, we don't know the R, but we put 6 in to get that. What's 6 minus 1? 5, so 5 goes up there. I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. I got out negative 6,250, I still don't know A1, R, but I put 9 in to get that. What's 9 minus 1? 8. Now this one's just a tad bit different than the ones you had in your assignment, but it's still the same concept because what I want you to do is solve for A1 for the one that has the smaller R. So which one's got the smaller R? Left side or right side? Left side. So if I divide by R to the fifth, I get a sub 1 equals negative 50 over r5. Now, substitution means I'm going to plug in that for a sub 1. So I took the a1 out and put the other equation in its place, substitution. Now, from here, let's simplify that before we go any further. If I've got eight R's on the top and five R's on the bottom, who has more, top or bottom? By? Now you need to solve for R. What do you do first? Not add. Divide by negative 50 first because we are multiplying there. Where do I get the eight from? Remember this format is a sub 1, r to the n minus 1. So when I put, so do you see how it says 9 right there? 9 minus 1 is 8. Over here, 6 minus 1 is 5. That's where I got those two numbers from. So what is negative 6250 divided by negative 50? Say it again. One what? I think you had too many or not enough zeros or something. Okay, now how do you get rid of something cubed? Cube root it, right. And what's the cube root of 125? Five. Okay. Now that you know what the R is, how do you work backwards to find A1? Plug it in. Plug it in. Right. Negative 50 divided by 5 to the fifth. Now, when you type that into your calculator devices, you could take negative 50 divided by 5 to the fifth, and it will give you a decimal. Convert that to a fraction. So frack it. Negative 2 over 125. OK. 
Okay, that's A1. So now for the final answer, A sub n equals, what's the first term that you just found? What's the ratio? And minus 1. All right, next one. Okay, what kind of sequence is that? Is that arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. That's what they look like, 3n plus 5, if you were to distribute them out and combine like terms. They would look like a linear situation. So when we had these, one of two options. Option A, find all nine terms of the sequence and then add them together. That's option A. Option B is you can use S sub n equals n times a1 plus an divided by 2. That's the other option. So if I'm going from 1 to 9, how many terms am I summing? 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then A1 means what's the first term? So if I plug 1 in there, what's 3 times 1? Plus 5? 8. A sub n refers to the last term. What's 3 times 9? Plus 5? Over 2. What's 8 plus 32? 40 divided by 2? 20 times 9? 180. Now again, the alternative could have been, some of you could have went and found all nine terms. And you probably would still have been finding, you know, probably like the seventh or eighth term. And then you add those together. That is an option. Okay? That's just using the formula to your advantage. Again, N stands for how many terms you're going to sum. A1 refers to the first term, which means I put one in to see what I got. A sub n means the last term, so I put the top in and see what I got. And then I have to figure it out through the formula. That formula works for your arithmetic ones, not your geometric ones. It's a different formula. Okay? 16. Is it arithmetic or geometric? Geometric. How did you know it was geometric and not arithmetic? Okay, Because when you see the k minus 2 up on the top, whenever you have exponents, you're dealing with geometric, just so you know, because you're multiplying it by something else. The geometric one, again, just like the last one, you could find all five terms and then add them together. That is an option. If you want to go that route, that is an option. Option two, however, is using their formula, which is for this one, S sub n, A1, 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. Either one of those, okay, the last one or this one, could have been done by finding all the terms and adding them together. That's an option. But this is the formula. So here's the downfall for this one. Some of you were saying that A1 was 11 but it's not. And the reason why it's not is because we're not putting in 2 at first. We're putting in 1. Okay? So if I put 1 in for the first number, that's 11 times negative 3, 1 minus 2. What's 1 minus 2? Negative 1. Do you guys remember what you do with negative exponents? How you get rid of them? What? 
Oh, no, that's negative. That would be a negative underneath the root. So you're on, you're on, at least you had something. To... Anybody know how to get rid of negative exponents? You bring it to the bottom. Okay, it's like a division symbol. So it's 11 over negative 3. That's the first term. What's the ratio? That one's still negative 3. And if you didn't know that, what you could do is you could put 2 in there and see what you get, and then take the second term divided by the first term. How many terms are we summing when it goes from 1 to 5? Five. Because exponents come before. Exponents come before. It would make a difference to Mara if we had, if it was finding for the first four. And the reason why I say that, Tamara, is because if you were to change this to adding first, and then it was raised to the fourth power, this would be a different, totally different number. Instead of a negative, it would be a positive. Okay, so be very careful with that. Exponents first. Then you can do that if it's two negatives. So from here, can you put that in your calculator to find the answer? Probably. Here's how you do it. Parentheses, negative 11 divided by 3, close it. <coughs> parenthesis, parenthesis. 1 minus parenthesis, negative 3, close it, caret 5, close it, divided by, open it, 1 minus parenthesis, negative 3, close it, close it, close it. If you want the calculator to do all your work for you, that's how you would have to type that one in. Yes. You close it three times. The first one closes the negative three. The second one closes the bottom. And the third one closes the whole thing. What'd you get? Okay, so we're out of time, right, for today. I'll finish the last two tomorrow, and then I'll give you that other review assignment thing that will be on your devices. Huh? You can keep it till tomorrow. You can hang on to it.